before these new owners took over and before I started managing, the gym itself was actually on a decline. Like it was, it was actually going downhill. Um, and then a new owner, new owner took, took over, uh, then hired me as a manager. And I've been there from the beginning. Um, and since, since all this has begun, there's been close to a hundred new members within a year and a half of because with simply the the old way of doing it with that they were doing they the manager like wasn't friendly the and they weren't answering the phone during like staffed hours they they weren't even having the door open for new members to potentially come in so there was like a lot of a lot of laziness going on in that sense um and then the new owners took over and be like hey there's there's a phenomenal system already in place Let's just utilize that. Yeah. Really simplify everything. Yeah. Get rid of get rid of people who you know are not friendly to customers because it's a customer service based um, position there. Right. So that that's another important thing is that thinking of thinking of business when you are hiring someone that they have the characteristic and traits that you know you want to implement within the business itself. Hey, I'm Nathan Crane. I'm Derek Crane. And we're the co-founders of Crane Factor and the hosts of the Activating Greatness podcast. And Activating Greatness is about living with greatness every single day, understanding yourself and being true to who you are, and creating greatness in every area of your life. And in today's episode, we're talking about how to be a great leader, coach, or consultant. Now, these things are not mutually exclusive. Often, they tie into one another. We are going to be talking about business, how to be a great business owner, a leader in your community, a leader in your gym, uh, a better coach, a better consultant, how leadership applies to just about every area of your life, and some of the key principles from some of the leading thinkers on the subject of how you can be a better leader in all these different areas. So let's start at the very beginning of what does it mean to be, a great, to be a great leader. And then we'll talk about how can you be a better leader. So <clears throat> I like to think of leadership as a, you know, the metaphor that comes to my mind is like an oak tree, right? It's something that is going to grow significantly over time. And it's not something that's gonna grow overnight, right? It's something that as it's growing, it's developing branches, uh, and its purpose is in giving, expanding, nourishing. That tree's always going to be there the stronger it gets through adversity. It's always going to be there through the wind and the storms. These are the things that make the tree stronger, right? The roots that go down into the ground that create its solid foundation, those are the learning experiences, the, the challenges, the failures. I mean, that's how a tree works is that the stronger winds that come through, those adversities, those challenges, those difficulties, the stronger the roots grow. The less nourishment there is for the tree, actually, the, the more that the roots will grow deeper. And that's when you think about yourself as a leader. One, growing taller, bigger, better, but also rooting down deeper into the principles and qualities and systems of leadership. And in doing this, in continuing this metaphor of, of an oak tree, you can, over time, right, grow into something significantly uh, better and different and amazing than the little seed or the acorn that that oak tree came out of, you know. And you're going to go through seasons as a tree, too. You're going to go through seasons as a leader. You're going to have your summertime where you're flourishing and you feel empowered and everything's going great. Mm -hmm. You're going to have your fall where you're shedding some of the old systems and shedding some of the old patterns and thoughts and beliefs. You're going to go through winter where things might be challenging. They're harder. You don't have enough reserves. You kind of have to go inside yourself and figure out who you are as a leader and, and figure out how to become a better leader. And you're going to have spring where now things start to open up again. Some of these ideas start to uh, come to life. Some of these new seeds start 
uh, growing inside of you. And again, you're going to have summer. And these seasons can be short for some people. They can be long for some people, but it's important. You know, I first learned this idea of, of going through seasons in our life through Jim Rohn, one of the uh, late, great, one of my favorite all-time personal development teachers and, and leaders in the world who passed away a few years ago. Um, and, and, you know, he talks about these seasons in life. Well, you're going to have these seasons as a leader as well. And it's important to recognize which season you're in right now and how to prepare for the next season. So when you're in it, you can take the most advantage of it. I love that example of the oak tree. Always ever expanding and growing and flexible. And when I think, when I think of leadership and from my own experience as well, you know, getting captain for the varsity football team through high school, becoming the team leader through college football, then, then actually coaching football, and then from there becoming a personal trainer and, and being a coach every single day. The one aspect that stands out the most and that I've seen to be the most profound is to lead by example. Mm -hmm. So even when, even when those roles um, came into fruition, it wasn't within my mindset like I want to be the captain of the varsity football team, but I just put the work ethic into it, and then that raised the bar for the people around me. And right. It's the same. It's the same thing through getting the team leader of the call of the college football team, and then also now managing a gym. Like I'll go, I'll go out outside of the office and even do a workout, like an intense workout during during slow times and i have people come coming up to me saying wow it's inspiring and motivating that you're not just sitting in the office like we we want to we want to work out harder and we enjoy coming to this gym because you're out here putting in hard work which you could see in some gyms you go to the manager of the gym is you know overweight yep. sitting on the computer playing games or yep watching YouTube and not being involved in the gym at all, whereas what you're doing as a manager of a gym is actually going out and doing what you teach and leading by example. Yeah, exactly. And what I find that naturally happens is that people will come up to me and ask me questions. They'll just start, I'm not, I'm not out there, you know, telling people what to do or anything like that, but they'll see what I'm doing. And then suddenly I'm in a leadership role because they're asking me what I'm doing for nutrition and what this movement specifically does on the TRX and why am I doing all these explosive movements? Right. And you know, why, why, do I, why am I not on the machines just doing a circuit training through, through the machine work? Uh, and then as a personal trainer, I'm also in a sense, a life coach. And what I, what I find is that leading by example. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I've experimented with, you know, so, so many different diets and I've found something dialed in nutrition supplement wise. So on my own personal experiment. So when I'm saying, when I'm giving advice, it's from personal experience that then I believe that that's where wisdom comes into play. And one of my, one of my favorite role models uh, who talks about leading by example is none other than Michael Jordan. And this book, Driven From Within, the, the first thing that he says in this is, I couldn't be a vocal leader at the beginning. I was afraid to speak to veteran guys. Then he goes on to say, my leadership came from action, mm. all action. Yeah. And then, and then this last piece, which I feel is very important, is he says, I had to pick my friends very carefully. Mm -hmm. So important that we realize what you had said, our role as a leader, but then also be aware and conscious that we are also being led and that we, and that we can choose how to be led. So like the friends that we pick, the people that we're hanging out with. Right. And, and in that sense, being able to lead ourselves into, you know, setting the standard of the life that we want to live. That can be one of the hardest things. I've gone through it a number of times of, you know, when you kind of outgrow mm -hmm. the consciousness of the, some of your closest friends and the people around you because you're heading in this direction of, let's say, personal development, becoming better in these, all these areas of life. And they're kind of still stuck or staying in the mm -hmm. same routines maybe drinking partying doing whatever that maybe things that you're not you know you're kind of transcending beyond and if you stay in that environment with them you're going to stay stuck 
and the best thing you can do for them and for you is to keep moving forward and they're either going to be pulled forward with you or you're going to move into an environment and surround yourself with people that are greater than you that can help pull you into the direction you're trying to go. And that's what I've found time and time again. And it is very difficult because you, these people are meaningful to you. And it doesn't mean you have to, you know, uh, defriend them, you know, like, ah, uh, you know, you don't have to get mad about it or like have, have it turn into some kind of really negative situation. It's just if you naturally let that process unfold, mm -hmm. you'll find yourself hanging out with them less and less mm -hmm. and hanging out and surrounding yourself with people who are on the path you're on more and more. Mm -hmm. And that kind of evolution naturally happens. And, and sometimes it is a really bad breakup or, you know, mm -hmm. just dissolving of that friendship. And that's happened too. And it is challenging. But you have to know that if you want to grow, you have to outgrow the, the people around you or surround yourself with better people. I mean, it's just... It's just how it is. And it, it reminds me of uh, John Maxwell, uh, an incredible author. I've read a number of his books. One of his books I really like is uh, Developing the Leader Within You. And uh, one of the things that he says is a leader is one who knows the way, goes the way, and shows the way. So to break that down, it's to know the way. If you don't know the way, you have to figure it out. You have to learn it. You have to go through experience. You have to study it. You have to learn from the masters and then goes the way it means you actually have to do it you can't just sit around and read and listen and then think you're going to be a great leader you actually have to implement these things that you're learning and then the next step is showing the way helping guide people towards uh, being better at what they're doing or what they aspire to be as well mm -hmm. and another incredible author and speaker and teacher. Um, I'm sure many people listening have heard of the book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Another really great book, Stephen Covey. He says, leadership is a choice, not a position. And that's the difference between a great leader and a mediocre leader, is that someone who uh, falls back on their title, on their position, I'm president, so you have to listen to me. Or I'm manager, so you have to listen to me. Mm -hmm. Versus inspiring people through, like you said, through their actions, through their disciplines, through their what they say and what they teach, what they preach and what they actually walk. The leadership qualities are significantly different. You will lead people significantly greater if you inspire through the way that you live rather than falling back on, well, you have to listen to me because I'm your boss. Mm -hmm. You will always have a high burnout by doing that. People will get burned out. They won't follow you. You'll always have to fall back on that title. And you'll always be a mediocre leader. Mm -hmm. You want to be a great leader, get past the title. It's not, as Stephen Covey says, it's not a position. It's not like, it doesn't really matter what your title is. Mm -hmm. You know, your, your quote from Michael Jordan was great too. It's like he got, he was going into the NBA as one of the all-time greatest players already mm -hmm. going in. And he was afraid, mm -hmm. right, to talk to people. So what did he do? He just did everything he knew how to do, which was work his hardest and do his absolute best every single day. And people started naturally following him and wanting to listen to him and learn from him because he showed through example. He didn't go in there and say, oh, I'm an NBA all-star now. Mm -hmm. You have to listen to me. Or I'm, I was the greatest basketball player in college, so you have to listen to me. You know, He went in there a little bit humbled and said, nope, I got to prove myself. And that's what it is being a leader too. You, you do have to prove yourself in that way. And, and it's, it doesn't necessarily have to be like egotistical in any way, like I'm better than you. Mm -hmm. It's just like, I'm going to practice what I preach and get better at developing these skills within me every single day. And that leads us kind of to, to the how. What are these skills that it takes to be a better leader, to be a better coach, to be a better consultant? How do we do that? And um, there's a lot of ways to do it, but we want to talk about five main ways today. And the first way is to always work on yourself. Mm, always grow. Always, always growing. And it's so important because that's where you're going to put it into action. When you develop yourself, always developing yourself and like that oak tree that's ever expanding and growing, searching for knowledge, 
developing yourself in different ways through meditation, through nutrition, through physical exercise. But also I like how you gave insight into knowing. So you first, you first have to know, and then that knowing is through researching, and then now the how is put into physical action. So now you have to actually go out and do it. <laughs> yeah, and it's really part of our opening phrase of the podcast is understanding yourself and being true to who you are. Mm. Um, always working on yourself is accepting those things about yourself, recognizing mm. them and accepting them, the things that that you don't necessarily like, mm -hmm. as well as the things that you really do like. Mm -hmm. And being courageous and open enough to, to, to accept like, yeah, this is a part of me, a habit, a thinking system, a thought process, something mm -hmm. I do that I don't really like about myself and I would like to change that to be better. We, we have to recognize and accept that if we want to grow. Mm -hmm. and. You know, there are many ways to do that. Meditation, self-reflection, having a coach, having a consultant to guide you, having people around you that are willing to point that out to you. Say, look, man, you've been doing X, Y, Z for a, a number of years now. And if you don't change that, you're going to stay stuck right where you are. It takes a willingness to invite that in. Yeah. And that takes courage because a lot of people aren't willing to face their own demons, if you will, or their own faults or their own you know, inner challenges. And, and I don't think anybody really needs to be fixed. It's just a matter of saying, look, who, how do I want to show up in the world? Mm -hmm. Who do I really want to be? And then recognizing, okay, if I really want to show up that way, if I really want to be great in these areas or be better in these areas, then I have to let go of some of these old patterns and things that I've been holding on to. Mm -hmm. And to do that, we have to understand ourselves and, and, and actually practice what we preach and one potent practice that we can all do is sit down open up open up a journal even just a blank page write down strengths and weaknesses and this is something that even the through physical exercise i like i like to do as a personal trainer but you can also do it in every single area of your life you know communication skills relationship your own health you know you can you can go over into your own emotional state you can go into how your finances are how how do you save money? I mean, every little aspect, you can go write down your strengths, but then also write down your weaknesses. Don't get down on yourself about the weaknesses and then start turning those weaknesses into strengths. Yep, we turn weaknesses into strengths simply by practicing. Like I suck at swimming right now and I don't really want to swim because it's not that fun for me because I suck at it, but I'm forcing myself to go a couple days a week anyway to get better. And that's, and we can apply that to everything in our life. Um, that leads us in a second thing of how to be a great leader or a better leader, coach or consultant is to absolutely love what you do. You have to love the work you're doing in the world. Otherwise you'll never live up to your full potential. If you don't like it, if you, if it's something you dread, if it's something that doesn't inspire you or get you motivated, well, guess what? You'll never aspire to being the best at it that you possibly can be mm. because you just don't enjoy it. So get into work, get into meaningful things that actually inspire you and that whether they pay you or not doesn't really matter in the beginning. Just start doing things that you really enjoy. Yeah, I like how you said whether it pays you or not. Start figuring out your passions. Again, you can use that tool to sit down and write down what you're passionate about. You know, a lot of people will work all day and then go home and watch TV until they go to bed. Well, instead of watching that TV, sit down and start writing stuff that you're passionate about. You like to, you like to write, draw, color, paint, dance. It can be anything, anything, and then start incorporating those into your daily activities. Right. And as I mean, this is a whole podcast by itself, which we will do in the future. Um, so I'm not going to go too much deeper in that because this will take us another 30 minutes. <laughs> um, so so let's just go right to the next one. The third one is uh, you have to have a service mindset mm. to be a great leader. You have to think of others. And, you know, we've all heard win win. Good for you. Good for them. I've developed a mindset in my businesses over the years of win, win, win. So it's triple win. It's always thinking about how do we benefit you? How do we benefit us? And how do we benefit the whole, the collective, 
the planet, the entire community, all people on the earth? Is it good for everybody involved? And even you don't think the entire planet's involved, but guess what? If you're producing or manufacturing something that's destroying the planet or destroying other people's lives in another country that maybe you don't see because you're not there, but it's happening because of what you're creating here. Well, guess what? That's not a win, win, win. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's not that easy right now to, to always do things that are going to benefit everybody, but it's a mindset, that service mindset that's really important to have because when you have that, doors tend to open your company, your business, your gym, whatever it is, starts to, people recognize it as a true caring community, a true caring business or organization that actually has the greater good in mind. Mm -hmm. And you will, everyone involved will be more fulfilled because of it. And more fulfilled, there's enough scientific data now that happier workers equals mm -hmm. more productivity in your business equals more money to your bottom line. So literally happiness equals more money. Mm -hmm. So if you're, you know, have to worry about shareholders, um, uh, quarterly profits and, and all of that, then literally helping your employees be happier is going to help your shareholders be happier. It's going to add more to your bottom line. Um, and to do that, it's about thinking of uh, not what can I get from you to benefit me? How do I benefit you and at the same time benefit me mm -hmm. and at the same time benefit everybody. Yeah, I really like the mindset of win, win, win. So you're thinking of the whole picture. Because sometimes it can, be, it can come into play where you just like want someone else to, to have everything, give, give your all in that right. sense, and then, and then not have anything in return. So right. you, have to, you also have to have the mindset of, you know, you're, you're going to get something out of it without the ego involved. Balance, yeah. The balance of all of it, and also within the business itself. Too. Absolutely, that's another good point. Absolutely, you have to, I've been there too, early, early stages, you know, of like just giving, 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 and not receiving anything. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so you have to find balance in all ways. Um, the fourth thing is, you have to empower others to lead. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, um, if, if you're a leader where everybody's dependent on you, um, you're gonna have problems when you wanna take a vacation or when you leave for any reason at all. Maybe you leave the company, you leave the organization. If everybody's dependent on you for um, everything or a majority of things, guess what, you'll never have the freedom that you want. Being a leader, being a CEO, being a business owner, a big part of that drive is that you get more freedom. You should have more time freedom to go vacation, travel, do other things as well, right? Write a book. Can you, the question you have to ask yourself as a business owner, can you take a month off from work right now? Turn off cell phone, computer, everything. Take a month off, go to Fiji, live on the islands, write a book, surf, do whatever you want, and your business will run itself automatically without you there and stay uh, in the black, stay profitable, or even grow without you? And if the answer is no, then you're not empowering others enough to be leaders, and also to lead us in the fifth thing, your systems probably aren't set up sufficiently yet. But empowering others to be leaders, there's enough examples of this, like in spiritual groups, for example, like the followers of Osho, if anybody's ever followed Osho or knows Osho, um, or many spiritual leaders that when people become dependent on one leader and then that leader dies or disappears, guess what happens to that incredible dream and vision, right? It, it either dissolves, goes away, um, or really minimizes into something significantly smaller um, than it was and doesn't grow into the vision that it originally had. So you have to empower your team members to think for themselves and to be willing to step in and make decisions and to be willing to want to be better leaders themselves. And that's something that I've even seen at Anytime Fitness, the gym that I'm managing, is the owner of the gym has trained me in such a way to be able to run it as an owner, you know, as a manager so that, yeah, he's, and he's given me complete and total responsibility over like the emails and being able to even do like the, the financial stuff of all of it because there's trust involved in there too. But also right. within that, he has 
a lot of freedom. And so it's something that I've appreciated seeing as a manager, how an owner is training me as a manager so that then, you know, when I own a gym, that then those practices are implemented. Yeah, doesn't he travel all the time? Yep. He comes in, what, like once a week or something? Yep. And basically you run the gym. Yep. And he's the owner. And that's how it should be. Yeah. You own a gym, you should have that time freedom. You shouldn't be stuck down to the desk all day long, 12 hours a day. If you are, there are a number of things wrong. And we'll talk about that in number five, which is to be a great leader, you have to develop systems thinking. Mm. Your systems have to be on point. And there's something called the 94% rule. It was created by Dr. Edwards Deming, who is considered the number one systems guru in the world. And what he developed and understood through enough data is that 94% of the results in business are a function of systems and processes in which people work, not the efforts of people. And most businesses or leaders or business owners focus on how do you make people work more, do more. And if they're doing more and working more, but the systems aren't sufficient to support them, guess what's going to happen? They're just going to be turning their wheels like a hamster, right? They're just going to be running in circles. You can't outrun the system. And if you think about that for a second, 94% of the effectiveness of the results of your business depends on your systems, not your people. 94%. Where do you think you should be focusing most of your time as a business owner? Definitely the systems. The systems. And this is a great example of this business owner. He has developed systems. Well, anytime fitness has developed great systems as yeah. a gym, as a franchise, right? That's how they've grown into what they've been able to do. You only need, they have it set up so you only need one person there, you know, six hours or seven hours a day, yeah. right? Um, you, people check in themselves. Uh, the doors are locked unless you have a special scanner. Um, uh, he can train you to run the gym without him being there. Uh, you have access to the online system, to the members, to you know what to do if, if somebody sneaks in, which is hard to do anyway, mm -hmm. but uh, you have cameras and systems in place for that. So it's a really great example of, of a small profitable, profitable business that doesn't require much uh, overhead or management or oversight at all, where it's 94% of that business is based on the systems and those systems are in place and they're working good and it's up to the leader to recognize those systems, to follow those systems. If he goes in there as a business owner and starts changing all that mm -hmm. uh, uh, that's not necessary and gets himself more involved and says, I need to be here every day, I got to be watching people, I got to... And we were looking at buying a gym, mm -hmm. right? And, and when I met with the owners, that's exactly what happened. They had no good systems in place mm -hmm. and they went from, they bought a gym that was really profitable and, and within three years they were losing money. So the gym with its systems in place was turning uh, a really good profit. They bought it, tried implementing all new things that didn't work mm -hmm. and now it's in the red. So follow systems, find systems that, that, that work. Um, and understand something called the law of dissipative structures. I first learned th about this from a good friend and colleague, David Dibble, who I think we'll have. I definitely invite him to be on the podcast. He's got a new book coming out who can talk even more about this. He's an incredible educator of, of leaders and developing conscious systems within large organizations. But uh, the Nobel Prize winning uh, Ilya Prigogine uh, developed something called the law, or recognized something called the law of dissipative structures, which is all systems in the universe go through the process of change in the same way. Mm -hmm. um, which means a system is stable when the amount of energy coming into the system is the same as the energy that releases through the system. Mm -hmm. So energy in, energy out, it's the same in, same out, system stable, right? Mm -hmm. Everything's smooth. Um, in a changing environment, things are changing, new ownership, uh, companies growing, whatever's causing change, um, uh, the system naturally resists change because it's developed for a certain amount of energy. So it resists that change and in so doing, it brings more energy into the system which stresses the system. And anything that stresses your system stresses your people. And when your people are stressed, it causes more stress to the system as well. So it's this accumulative effect between the people and the system 
continuing to get stressed. Um, as that more energy comes in, the system can't release enough energy. So now you got all this energy coming in and the system's still outputting the same amount of energy because it's that old system. It doesn't know how to output any more energy. And what happens is it, once it reaches a critical mass, it goes into a state of chaos. And you see this in companies all the time when they're growing, maybe they're becoming an IPO, maybe they're, uh, it's a new owner, maybe they buy a new location, whatever. There's a lot of different things. They hire people, fire people, whatever. All different things will put stresses on the system. Mm. Now, once it reaches that critical mass, that system goes into chaos and you have an opportunity. Mm. You have two opportunities. One is the company implodes and goes away. Or two is a new system can be born. And in that new system, uh, you create it in a way that it can, it's a totally new structure. It's not the same structure as it was before. Mm -hmm. And it can now handle uh, the amount of energy coming in and output that same amount of energy. So a couple of really quick examples. One, um, uh, a small gym. So let's give the example because you manage a gym. Let's say um, it's one person who's managing it, they're checking in people manually, um, they're processing credit card information manually, mm. they're having to type it in every single month, mm. right? And you see this in a lot of small businesses. There's always someone there that it's the same person that's greeting people, that's managing, that's cleaning, that's processing credit card payments, that's doing all these things manually. Um, they, maybe they get referrals or word of mouth, they start doing some marketing because they want to make more money, and all of a sudden they have an influx of new clients and they can't keep up with the system. Mm -hmm. Now you got too many people coming in mm -hmm. and that outdated system is gonna cause stress and now you have to either turn people away or adopt a totally new system, right? And the basic solution in that scenario, which is true for almost every small business, is automation. Yep. And Anytime Fitness is all about automation. So it's a great system for people to, to look into and that's a whole podcast on itself as well as how to automate your business. But there's a lot of ways to do it. Yeah, automatic payment information. So that just automatically comes out each month. Yeah. And then, and then if it shows that it didn't come out, then there's a signal showing that it didn't, and then you just call that number. And, and it locks if they don't pay. It locks lock, their key. They, they can't pay, get yeah. in. They get emails. They, right. All these different triggers are in place to make sure that the system works. And and talking about you know just allowing the system to flourish in and of itself. Before these new owners took over and before I started managing, the gym itself was actually on a decline. Like it was, it was actually going downhill. Um, and then a new owner, new owner took, took over, uh, then hired me as a manager. And I've been there from the beginning. Um, and since, since all of this has begun, there's been close to 100 new members within a year and a half. Of, because with simply the the old way of doing it, what the, they were doing, they, the manager like wasn't friendly, the and they weren't answering the phone during like staffed hours. They they weren't even having the door open for new members to potentially come in. So there was like a lot of a lot of laziness going on in that sense. Um, and then the new owners took over and be like, hey, there's there's a phenomenal system already in place. Let's just utilize that. Yeah. Really simplify everything. Yeah. Get rid of get rid of people who you know are not friendly to customers because it's a customer service based um, position there. Right. So that that's another important thing is that thinking of thinking of business when you are hiring someone that they have the characteristic and traits that you know you want to implement within the business itself. Well, and they understand sales too. One of the yeah. ways you've been able to grow that is that when people walk in. You can close them on a new membership pretty yeah. easily because you've developed your cell system process. You're not afraid to talk to people and encourage them to sign up. And you, mm -hmm. every person that walks in, you're encouraging them to get a membership and you walk them through the process and the benefits and the advantages. And yeah. you understand sales in that way. Yeah. And so having those people in place, those systems you talked about, having the doors open, answering the phone, and then somebody who knows how to close the, the cell, guess what? You've grown it. Mm. you know, uh, in the way that you've been able to. And, and it's just a great example of that. Um, one final example here before we wrap up. Um, I've been uh, consulting with a, um, a small to medium-sized organization that's growing. 
and um, and they're in the health and healing industry, and this can apply again to any business in in any industry. Um, you know, they have like 20 plus employees, but they've been using an outdated, very expensive software uh, for their their memberships, for their products, programs, things like that. Um, that that system lacks the reporting it needs, it lacks the integration it needs, the tracking. It does have automation, but the automation is limited. Um, and you know that puts stress on the system. Uh, additionally, they were missing a really strategic marketing plan. They were doing marketing and advertising, but it was kind of all over the place. It wasn't necessarily as strategic as, as it could be. Um, the CEO, the visionary of the company, was also running operations which is something, especially a growing organization, you don't want to have happen. Um, and they were lacking communication between all heads of the departments. So people were kind of on islands, right? And that's something you definitely don't want in a growing organization. And they were focusing on too many projects at once. Um, and people and the departments were getting overworked and stressed. Right, and so more energy is coming in, but the systems aren't supportive enough for the output that that uh, company wants to do. Right, wants to grow, have more money, help more people, all of these great things, but the system's not sufficient enough. So, um, some of the things they've done uh, just in the last year, and some of the things that I've been able to help with as well, that has already helped change a lot of this, and now revenues have gone up. Um, the team is significantly more satisfied and engaged. People are significantly more uh, communicative and, and less stressed and more involved and more productive. Um, one is there's a meeting once a week with all the members of the team, the heads of each department. Um, and that meeting is, is kept capped at about 90 minutes. You don't want to be having too many meetings every week because then it's just you know, it's too much information and not enough productivity. Uh, they hired a new director of operations, which she's incredibly good at her job. And part of that is getting the CEO, the visionary, out of the operations role. So that there's actually a director of operations running operations and the CEO is getting out of operations and maintaining the visionary role, which is really important. Um, now, uh, um, in this case, now, it, it, titles aren't important here, like CEO, sometimes uh, would run operations uh, or president or it just depends but in this case the CEO is also the visionary so just people understanding that that you don't want your visionary of the company necessarily running operations mm -hmm. you know so whatever their title is doesn't really matter it's just understanding get the visionary out of operations and get somebody really good at operations running operations <laughs> and that's what they did um, and uh, we've been migrating programs and online uh, uh, coaching and, and um, uh, uh, courses and things like that out of the updated software into a much better software, more updated, better tracking, marketing, automation, all these things. Uh, they've been empowering the heads of teams to be better leaders, clarifying their roles, connecting deeper to the vision of the company, um, using communication systems and accountability software like Slack. Slack is a really great tool, check it out. Um, 15.5 as well and then we use Zoom for our team meetings so that we everybody sees each other because not everyone works in the same city so that personal interconnection is really important within a growing organization and then they hired an outside business and marketing consultant with with a proven track record who understands the business the model the products the services and who also understands and implements systems thinking and who themselves are um, generating more revenue, more profit, and having similar kind of products and services and events and things like that than the company itself. So that's what I mean by proven track record. They're actually doing what they preach. And so all these things combined, now this company's growing, all these benefits are happening, um, people are communicating, people are happier. It's a great team to be a part of. You know, I feel really great to be and, and honored to be a part of it, but it's great to see by now there's, it's not like um, that system is expanded. There's actually whole new systems being developed to handle that influx and to be able to manage the energy output um, and starting to hone in on a few core 
projects versus eight or 10 or 12 projects. Mm -hmm. So actually letting some things go and really focusing on a few really main important things. So those things alone have made a tremendous difference and actually has generated more revenue so far in the last year than, than they ever have before. So um, anyway, systems we could talk about for days, mm -hmm. and it's a really important subject. And the main thing we, we want you to take away from this is, um, one, the five key pieces we talked about. Always work on yourself, love what you do, have a service mindset, empower others to be leaders, and develop systems thinking. Mm -hmm. Understand more about systems and understand that 94% of the effectiveness and productivity in your company is based on systems. So systems are really important and we'll have more podcasts in the future about systems, about business, about leadership. Um, you can let us know who you're interested in us interviewing and being a part of this. And we also know some really key people we'll be inviting as well. Um, and uh, and just, just remember that you know leadership and developing yourself to be a better leader, it's an ongoing process and it's you know, it can take a long time. And I've been really focused on this for over a decade. And I have learned so much in being a leader and I continue to learn every day and I still have a long way to go. And it's an ever expanding learning opportunity to, to, to learn to be a great leader. And, uh, and we hope that this helped you in any way in whatever your goals and dreams and aspirations are. And Appreciate you tuning in and leaving your comments. If you're listening on iTunes, we'd love for you to give it a review. Um, share this. Uh, you can also watch the video on YouTube. Uh, share it on Facebook, social media, Instagram. Follow us at Crane Factor on Facebook as well. And you can join our newsletter for free at cranefactor.com. Thank you for tuning in today. Remember to live within greatness in every area of your life. Take care. We'll talk to you soon.